Mummy's Little Helper is for me a really triggering book. This is a foster care memoir from Casey Watson and she's actually quite uncharacteristically looking after a little girl who doesn't really have any negative behavioural problems by which I mean she doesn't have a severe temper, she's not naughty, she doesn't disobey anybody. Quite the opposite actually, she aims to please the adults in her life but there are other things that mean that unless certain things are nipped in the bud now she could go on to have quite a complicated mental health. She's looking after this little girl called Abigail or Abby and she's 10 years old and she basically unbeknown to anybody else or at least the extent of which was not known to anybody else that she was her mother's carer. Her mother has just been hospitalized um, with a relapse. She's got MS and it's come about that Abby basically did everything for her mother and there are many young carers who help their parents and you know, kind of step in when professional carers aren't around. But it's transpired that Abby literally does everything for her mother. And they've kind of been self-sufficient for Abby's entire life. But that's had a detrimental effect on Abby. She's terrified of germs. Everything has to be organised. She's showing signs of OCD. And this is increasing as the, as the memoir progresses because as the stress in her life increases as do um, the various OCD tics that she's got. And for somebody um, who's had OCD for at least basically my entire life, there are things in this that trigger me. Because I'm at a point in my life now where I'm on top of my OCD for the most part. And reading this kind of reminded me of how bad it used to be for me and how bad it can be for people. And it's triggering, not triggering in the sense that it made me want to start doing those OCD tics again, um, not that it's a want but a need, but triggering as in it brought back those emotions. So that's something to bear in mind um, if you are reading this and you have OCD or have had a history of OCD. Um, it is quite emotional because obviously Abby is distraught that her mother's in hospital. The future um, for the child is unclear because her mother's definitely at a point now where they need to bring in outside help. But that means that she can't look after Abby. And Abby might have to go into mainstream foster care, which nobody really wants, but it doesn't seem like there's an alternative. And I won't say any more about that, but it's really a very moving book. It helps that Abby's a lovely child. Um, you know, she's, she's very sweet, she's keen to help out, overly keen to help out, which is part of the problem. Having spent her entire life doing the housework and, and making the meals, it's something that she almost compulsively has to do, because when she does that, She's helping her mother, and that's something that she likes doing, even though it's detrimental to her mental health. And again, I feel like had she not been, I was going to say caught, had this not been identified when she was 10 years old, and if this had persisted um, into maybe her teenage years, it might have been harder to help to retrain her to think and retrain her brain. And I imagine there are a lot of people in the same situation. So it's quite eye-opening in that regard and as I said it is quite triggering if you can relate. I'm sure other foster care memoirs are also triggering depending on what the children are going through but obviously this is one that stood out to me as being relatable in that regard. I really enjoyed it. It's an emotional book, it's, it's moving, it's well written. There are some grammatical errors and typing errors at least on the Kindle version um, this is my second time reading it. The first time I read the paperback that I would have got from the library. I, I don't remember if the, the typing errors and grammatical errors are in that version, but certainly on the Kindle, that's just something to bear in mind if, like me, those little things irk you. But the story's so good that it helped to carry through. Mummy's Little Helper is definitely worth reading. If you're new to Casey Watson's book, um, I'd say it's worth reading, but it's not the most gripping. It's not the most shocking. So it's maybe not the best introduction. And also I just recommend reading them chronologically because that's what I'm doing now. And it's a pretty great experience. Mummy's Little Helper is definitely worth reading and one that I really thoroughly enjoyed.